The art that occupies Gallery 202 may be modern, but nearly everything else, inside and outside, has a very long, very detailed history. In its infancy, the building, dubbed Clouston Hall, was a second home for a man named Edward G. Clouston. In the nearly 200 years between then and now, it's become a time capsule full of treasures that may be tough to put into words. No explanation. Well, there is an explanation. What's the explanation? We're haunted. It's a suspicion echoed by Gallery 202's current owner, Kelly Harwood. Um, and I really do think you have to be in tune with it. Um, and if you're not, one day you will be probably because, you know, I've seen and heard ghosts since I was a little child, and a lot of folks do, actually. Kelly says he bought the building knowing it was a hot spot for haunted activity and knowing that the house belonged to its permanent residence above anyone else. The original owner, Mr. Clouston's daughter, hung herself in the staircase there. Right up there? Right up there. And uh, oh. I have seen her image of her body, actually, and uh, I saw her feet dangling from her her, from her dress. So that's a sad story. She was wanting to marry her sweetheart. She was a teenager and her father um, said, no, you're going to marry this older gentleman. It was an arranged marriage and she didn't want to because she was in love with a younger man. And uh, so she uh, took her life. He says the spirit will appear from time to time, but in between there's plenty more to see and feel. In terms of this building's haunted past, that was just the tip of the iceberg. 1821, we went through the Civil War and a lot of uh, people died in the house uh, because it was a hospital during the Civil War. A major moment in our country's history and a gruesome chapter of Gallery 202's story. This side was where they would do surgeries, amputations, and those stories are that the windows would, they would just raise the window and throw the arms and legs out the windows from amputations and all, so. A real life horror story right in the heart of Franklin, and the evidence is all there. We do have blood stains right behind you in the window area, um, and that's where they did the surgery that I mentioned before. Aside from its historical importance, these grim features of the gallery are more of what make it a perfect spot to see something spine chilling. And this is actually the place where I saw one of the scariest things I've seen. So this window pane right here, I was gonna try to take a picture of an orb that everyone kept talking about that they see in this front window during the ghost tours that we're on. But up here was a uh, face of a man screaming. His mouth was open. And, but his mouth wasn't just open, it was way open, like larger than life open. And uh, inside his mouth was other faces screaming. But Kelly says even that doesn't compare to the scariest encounter he's had while giving a ghost tour of the gallery. Back years ago, we had a ghost tour that came in and back in the day, they had this little app on the phone that was called Ghost Radar. Mm -hmm. So this ghost app would also say something. It would say a word or two and it would say it out loud. And so I took the folks to the basement and said, let's see what's going on down there. We go to the basement and it, it was lit up and then all of a sudden it said, not dead. <gasps> so when it said not dead, that's when I got touched on the shoulder. That was enough to send Kelly running back upstairs. I looked like I was about to pass out faint. He looked like he'd seen a ghost. But even despite these unforgettable encounters, Kelly still says he wouldn't change a thing about where he spends his days. And I think this home is very protected by the spirits, in my opinion. And he's hoping that more people will join him in enjoying the company of these Franklin phantoms. The original doorbell here from 1821. In Franklin, Christina Shalhoop, News 2. I think so. <laughs>